Shabbat, my friends, and welcome to another episode of A Pilgrim Warrior's Progress. Today, um, there is a lot to say I want to make, or it is the desire of my heart to make several videos today, and I pray the Lord be with me in this one, and in all of those, and in all the publications that all of you might make, because are called to publish the gospel. We have good news. So many people are silent about the good news that we have. And if you had good news, like, I just got a nice phone that I very much like for, like, a third of the price it retails at. And <clears throat> personally, I think that's quite good news. I, I think I was happy to tell my wife that I got such a good price, and I was happy to really include her in my joy to share that good news that I had. Even that the good news was just something, a blessing for me, and hopefully it blesses her in some way as well. But the good news that we have of the gospel is even, <laughs> even better. It's infinitely better than I have a tool with which I can publish videos, record them, use, make notes, plan things, because the phone I got is for, for work. I wanted to have a work phone for ministry specifically. And I rejoice in that I have a tool that I can use to his glory. I have a special ministry phone number now for the ministry, and I can turn off my personal phone and I can just work on my work phone during work hours and I can set aside all of my personal social media and the temptations to watch personal YouTube videos and so forth. I can really just embrace the focus on one thing mentality, the letter 47A principle, as I am coining the term now to call it, for, because of the quote, the quote is, um, and you, if you'd watch me, you know this video, this quote, um, And in a letter titled Letter 47A from 1886, a sister, a woman named Ellen White, wrote to several preachers. And to those preachers, she said to them, Listen, you are trying to do too much. I think she even says in that quote, in that letter, or in another place, I think that's another place actually. But the theme is definitely there. She literally says in another place, do not try to do too much, period. Do not try to do too much. And so many of us are in that place where we just try to do too much. And it goes right along with the letter 47A principle, which is in order to be successful, you must do one thing at a time, concentrating all your powers upon that. And that is related to my decision to have a separate device that is set apart, that is sanctified for a holy purpose. And that purpose being um, the Assembly of Modern Publishers is this organization I am establishing or have established and am setting more focus on now because I want that organization to be successful. That does not mean I am going to abandon the other things I am doing. However, it does mean that when I do focus on it and focus on that one thing at a time, I can trust and have faith that I can have success. And I can rejoice in that promise. Because, for example, the uh, scriptures themselves say, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. And you cannot possibly hammer with one hand and then try to take your other hand and hammer with that as well on another part of the job and expect to be as successful as you would be if you had your nail in one hand, your hammer in one hand, focusing on one spot. And it's just ludicrous to suggest to a carpenter, 
except in like the rare situation where it's called for to to use two hammers at once and just go it's it's so crazy that you would never think of it but when it comes to multitasking in the modern world we certainly do that type of thing the two hammer technique and we we fail because of it we we do not have the success that we would otherwise and another quote i really like is from Cole Porter ministry i believe and it says we may not have had the success we prayed for but we cannot know and do not we may not see and do not know the the uh, fruit of faithful effort. So, whether we're focusing on one thing and seeing fruit, or focusing on one thing and seeing and in, in making faithful effort and not seeing fruit, obviously we want we might want to adjust our methods. We might want to like, you know, revise our battle plan, so to speak, our technique. But like, to totally abandon something and give up entirely because we did not have the success we prayed for because not the exact number of people were baptized because of because uh you know you did not make this certain goal on sales or you did not reach your certain goal on a certain time like if you do not have the success you prayed for but you made faithful effort trust that you are walking by faith because you cannot make faithful effort without walking by faith. Effort brings you forward, walks you forward. Faithfulness is faith. Walking by faith is what we need to do. And when we choose to walk by faith, and importantly, we need to walk by faith in Elohim, in God. We need to walk with God, with Elohim, because when we walk with Him, we actually deny ourselves because he's only walking in one direction. And that direction is a direction that every step is saturated with his love. Because the character of God as we know it is, it is love. He, it is written, God is love. There's no darkness in him. And Yeshua, Jesus Christ, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the light of the world. So, I'm, I'm exceedingly thankful. I have yet to, to really make much content. Um, at least not into the quantity I desire, and that might sound strange to you, thinking that, oh, I have hundreds of videos on here, lots of audiobooks that I've gotten permission to republish, and so forth, but, um, is I have been so unwell for so many years that I have been disabled from being able to have the success I have might have prayed for so to speak so like I could easily have given up and been like well forget it I just I don't want to even try like why bother But I, I, I recognize that sometimes I was more well than other times, or I was had a different affliction than other times. I had cycles of different types of afflictions in my health, in my life, and some of them were crippling. Some of them were this, you know, you know, uh, exhausting. And yet, some of them, the afflictions were such that I could do some work. And when I did some work, I recognized that I needed to 
redeem the time. I wanted to redeem the time, but God is the one that redeems the time. And my friend Andrew Carroll, 42 Design Co. He does 42 Design Co. is his website. He does graphic design. I highly recommend him. And he um, he said to me one day that that word for redeeming the time it means moments in a word. It's more to it than that, but it means moments. Redeeming the moments, the kairos. Like, just like uh, kairon, kairos, it's a um, Greek word, and it's powerful in that God can squish, so to speak. He can concentrate moments into the remaining time that could not physically like humanly fit um, otherwise because you could say like well time is time you cannot like slow down time you cannot really pause time at least from a human perspective but therefore how could you redeem time how could you make up for lost time if there's only as much time as you have left like your days are numbered you have as many days as you have they may be cut short by your own foolishness or by someone else's sin in choosing to end your life but if the amount of time you have is the amount of time you have and you've wasted some of it so far the and you you still only have, let's say, 20 years. It's not like God's going to give you... He could, but he may not give you an extra 20 years to make up for the 20 years you wasted. But he can redeem the moments by concentrating 20 extra years of accomplishments uh, and blessings and privileges and moments of joy and peace and thrill like, and struggle and uh, education and trial into the... Re the remaining years of your life so he's concentrating he's redeeming the moments that were lost and replacing them or moving them or putting better moments into the remaining life that you have and i recognize this principle in that like when i was well i trusted that god could redeem the moments the moments that were lost during my dark affliction the darkness the depression the despondency that was temp the despondency that was tempting me, the, the, the heaviness that weighed down on me, the dark clouds that were enshr enshrouding me. During, during those times, I lost a lot. And what I recognized is I could walk by faith and focus on one thing at a time, I could accomplish a lot in those few weeks or few months that I was not sick. And I encourage you to do the same in that, like, when you are well, seize the day. Pray today. Seize the day. Redeem the time. Or rather, let Elohim, our God, redeem the time in your life. Redeem the moments. Reclaim the lost moments, the lost opportunity and insert it into your new life. Because there's hope, there's potential, there's power, and it comes from God because every perfect gift cometh down from above. Every, every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from above, uh, from the Father of lights. And we can know that our Heavenly Father is the source of, you know, to be that source of our hope, that source of our joy, that source of our peace. And he, we know that we can have that peace that passeth understanding. So my encourage to all of you is to make known the good news, to focus on one thing at a time, to redeem the moments that are lost, to walk by faith, to rejoice, to have peace and trust in him. And if you need to recognize that something you're doing is a counterfeit comforter, that you can abandon that counterfeit comforter and come to the true comforter who is Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the one who died for you, if you just accept it and believe it, he can come into you by the Holy Spirit and comfort and encourage you 
And just like it is written that the Father and the Son will make their dwelling place in you, and you can walk with them in the light of their presence, and every day can be a precious joy, a precious privilege. So be strong, be of a good courage. Those are my words for today. Remember to, um, on all the channels that you watch on YouTube, the YouTubers, they really benefit when you like their videos, when you watch their videos for a while, and when you um, do all of the things, the commenting, the subscribing, all of that stuff helps all of those YouTubers. Remember to support your local YouTubers, so to speak, and uh, do those things. And... Just thank you for watching. If you really thought this was a blessing, the best thing I think you can do for for the channel is to share it on whatever you share things on. Or share it in person. Tell somebody about the channel. Tell somebody about the video. Because if you were blessed, my hope is that many others can be blessed. Just like you would read a book and hand it to your friend, listen to the video and hand it to your friend. For those of you who might need to hear, just like, you know, call your parents, like, thank your parents. It's a random thing, but it's important. Like, love, your, honor your mother and father. They did a lot for you. They sacrificed for you. They were the instrument through which God brought you into this world. And um, please do check out OpenTheArmory.org. We have scripture memory cards. We have used books, new books, audio books, Pilgrim's Progress. We hope to have Bibles, and we have lots of um, books by uh, different pioneers from back in the 1800s, like uh, Uriah Smith and James White and Ellen White and so forth. So uh, please check out all that stuff. I thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of your support. Shalom, my friends.